Ladies and gentlemen, this is Felipe speaking, and what incredible episode we have. This is very exciting. You know, this channel may not have the highest amount of subscribers. In fact, we kind of were demonetized by YouTube, some would say very unfairly. And even though there have been all kinds of roadblocks stopping us and being able to get all this amazing information out, one thing that actually has not slowed down is this channel reporting on controversial stories, at least stories that seem to be controversial at the time, that in the end, with time, actually gets proven correct. And today is no different, ladies and gentlemen. This kind of took me off my chair a little bit. I almost slipped off my chair. I, I was kind of shocked when I saw this. But there was an article written by George Knapp and uh, he was essentially highlighting some images that Jeremy Corbell, he is the director of that recent documentary about Bob Lazar. So Jeremy Corbell comes out with these images and surprise, surprise, they are nearly identical to the images that I've reported before regarding NASA images that I randomly discovered. So whereas these images are terrestrial images, you know, it's hard enough proving UFOs, but one thing that helps a little bit is when you get independent confirmation. Another thing that helps is when you get those pictures being shot in a terrestrial environment only to have somebody have the identical crafts shot in an extraterrestrial environment, talking about space, of course. And so this is a comparison of what seems to be US Navy images and NASA images. In short, what Jeremy Corbell is showcasing here is exactly the same thing that I showcased, except coming from a different department. He's showing images from the US Navy. I showed image from NASA. And it's actually one of the more recent episodes. So let's go ahead and read this and I'll show you exactly uh, what I'm talking about. So it says here, pictures and videos show unidentified flying objects moving above US Navy warships. Amazing images have been leaked from a secretive Pentagon investigation of UFOs. The UAP task force has been gathering evidence for a comprehensive report for Congress, which is due in June that includes photographs and videos of UFO encounters with U.S. military assets, including Navy destroyers off Southern California coast. Part of the report is to educate other military and intelligence officials about the nature of the UFO mystery. The new images were gathered by the task force and obtained by investigative filmmaker Jeremy Corbell, who confirmed their authenticity. Mystery Wire has independently confirmed that the visual material are included in the briefing presentation prepared by the UAP task force. Several U.S. warships based in San Diego were repeatedly buzzed by unknown aerial intruders. Story of strange encounters bubbled to the surface last summer, initially focused on the USS Kidd Navy destroyer. A month ago, more documentation surfaced in the form of ship logs, which confirmed that aerial intruders were seen by crews aboard multiple warships in restricted waters off the coast of Southern California. The objects were described as drones, but there was not any descriptions of where they came from or who they might be controlling them. One remarkable video was recorded July 2019 by Navy officers using a night vision device showing what appears to be pyramid shaped objects. And I'm going to show you one that we did actually that we showcased from NASA hovering 700 feet above a Navy destroyer. This video was taken on a deployment from the USSR Russell Corbell said it shows what they described as vehicles and they made a great distinction. They made sure in the classified briefings, they made a great distinction that this is not something that we owe either a black project. This is not something of a foreign military, that these were behaving in ways that we did not expect. And that they were, you know, shaped non-aerodynamically, like pyramids. These are flying pyramids. The video is one of several forms of visual evidence gathered by the UAP task force to document bizarre encounters reported by the U.S. Navy during the past two years, including photos of three stationary drones of unknown origins, reported earlier this week. This week, Mystery Wire shared photographs taken by the crew of an F-A-18 off the coast of Virginia in March 2019. Some critics think that they are simply 
drones, or balloons, but the Navy and the task force list them as unknowns. They are included in the task force briefing. The overall report is classified, but the images are not. Now, I'm when they talk about the UAP task force, I'm wondering if this is the same organization that's in charge of gathering evidence, because I think it was like in the stimulus bill that they had to release uh, UFO uh, evidence uh, in the next 180 days. Now, I'm not 100% sure about this. So if anybody can confirm this or deny this in the comment section, that would be uh, helpful. Corbell says that the briefing lists multiple events involving several ships over a few days. That was in July 2019. It got increasingly strange, Corbell said. The 14th and 15th of July, there were some light drone sightings. And by the way, on the other ships, they had different things that happened. Some were just like lights that did figure eights and patterns and 90 degree churns. Others were like a different color light, like red. Among the other images from the time period is a spherical object photographed by the crew of the USS Omaha as it flew nearby, then descended into the ocean. The Navy called it a transmedium vehicle. Transmedium vehicle. I don't think I've heard that term before. Where did they land? Where did they come from? How did they travel the distance? Corbell asked during a Mystery Wire podcast recording, how did they have the power source for the lights? <laughs> I mean, freaking light LEDs. I'm sure they got power source for the lights. How could they evade detection? If anyone in the Navy or the UAP task force knows, no one is talking on the record. The mystery drones, the spheres, the flying pyramids, the metallic blimps are considered to be true unknowns. Mr. Wire has reached out to the Pentagon for comments on these images and videos, but have not received a response. Now, what really shocked me about these images is the first one that particularly caught my interest was this one. I, I look, I've seen this image before. I, I, this particular craft, maybe not, but the second one, ladies and gentlemen, I swear we covered this on the NASA image episode. If you haven't seen it, uh, here is the episode that we published only a few months ago. Take a look. All right, and number seven, we got the craft. This image was taken at the surface of the moon and on the horizon, you see a white little dot. But let me tell you, this is more than just a white dot. And there's a reason why I call it the craft because when you zoom in, well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. it. It looks unbelievably symmetrical. It looks like, uh, it almost looks like one of those uh, hovercrafts that you take over the Everglades. It, it, either way, it looks pretty anomalous. So as you can see, there is uncanny similarities. So I wanted to kind of show you the comparison of the two crafts. So I actually have the original image over here, as you can see. And what I did is I took this little area where it looks like a sphere at first and I increased the size uh, using the Photoshop detail layer, which is kind of like a artificial intelligence pixel predictive uh, program that Adobe offers or filter, I should say. And basically this is what we get after I kind of messed around with the channels a little bit um, and kind of see the different renderings of it. So it started like this. And as I kind of punched in with the channels, we started getting a more kind of a three dimensional uh, version of it. Now let's take a look from the images that Jeremy Corbell released. Take a look, ladies and gentlemen. I often say this in, in this moment, I really have to say, are you kidding me? Now it may, you may think it's not perfect, but ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty amazing. I would say this was obviously captured on earth. And here's the original version. I put a channel mixer and just applied a hard light layer over it so you can kind of get the colors and the textures. And so here is something that's captured by the US Navy that is a terrestrial object. And here next to it, you have something that is an extraterrestrial object from NASA that we have already reported on months ago when we talked about the most amazing UFO images that NASA captured. And Look, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't the first time that we've identified crafts that appear to be of the same variety or, or the same type of craft. For example, one of the NASA images that we have, and we actually have the web address, so you can actually check this out for yourself. So 
I'll go ahead and post that on the video in the description. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put both of these images on uh, Photoshop and kind of show you what I'm talking about in capturing the exact same craft or what seems to be the exact same craft. So first of all, let's note that up here, we have what looks to be a perfect sphere. Now we already showed you the metallic blip object that seemed to mirror one of the US Navy images, but here they also talk about a sphere. And it just happens that in this particular image, we have what looks like a perfect sphere. I can actually do the channel mixing layer just to kind of show you how this changes and warps. You really kind of notice the three dimensionality and how this actually is or looks to be a sphere. And it seems more like a physical object than just seeing that bright green blob. But if I go back in the history, this is actually not even the most amazing aspect of this image. What I found so fascinating was down here. Now, if you remember Jeremy Corbell's documentary where Bob Lazar was talking about these crafts, he actually mentioned that there is a specific configuration where the craft is not flying horizontally, but vertically in which I think he called it the alpha state. And he also said that there was an energy field that wrapped around the object. Now, check this out. We have what looks like a craft flying vertically and around it, it looks like almost like there's a darkening around the craft, almost as if there's some kind of energy field around it. Look, I'm just going to increase the size and, and show this to you. I really don't see how this can just be a random artifact, or if it is an artifact, I really don't know what kind of artifact looks like this. I, I think that's, that's very strange. But what makes this uh, image so fascinating is how similar it resembles another craft that we saw in another NASA image. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I go and I plug this huge 4,000 by 4,000 image and you start zooming in, you're going to notice something here in the left corner. Take a look at that. And uh, just to kind of make this more clear, I'm going to go ahead and uh, increase the size of it. Do image size. We'll do a tenfold increase. So 930 should be good. So let's go ahead and uh, fiddle with some of the channels just to see how this thing starts transforming. I don't know about you, the, the viewers, but I do find that this is, uh, well, it looks like a craft. It looks extremely three dimensional. Uh, no matter how you apply these, filters, it always seems to form uh, some kind of interesting dimensional shape that would be reminiscent of a flying saucer. But not just a flying saucer, ladies and gentlemen, but something that perhaps resembles this. I could be wrong, but just to ask you, are, are we talking about the same craft here? Just one being just from a different perspective, one from the very top and the other one you photographed as it seemingly flies vertically. Uh, let me zoom out to show you what I'm talking about. So here's the picture of Earth and here's the craft flying vertically. So my point in showing all of this is that just based on the images that we found in NASA, we were able to find what could be two of the same crafts. But like I said, what was even more remarkable was seeing this article written by George Knapp where Jeremy Carbell is releasing these images that, well, it's like I said, one of them is terrestrial and the other one is extraterrestrial. And if we can presume that these are the same crafts, I mean, this is more than just independent confirmation. It's, it's almost a form of evidence, you know, evidence that these crafts that perhaps this was not evidence that it was extraterrestrial because we're seeing this in the regular terrain where jet fighters are. But if it can be concluded that this is the same craft, well, this one was captured on the moon. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, what else can I say? And of course they talk about a pyramid like uh, object. Now I'm not going to say that our object was exactly pyramid. Like we did do an episode where we talked about diamond shaped UFOs. And that seemed to resemble a little bit of what you would think a flying pyramid would be like. But the one thing that we did capture in NASA that was very, very interesting was this particular UFO, which showcases uh, what looked like just three triangular lights. But once we put the channel mixer, you obviously see structure 
behind uh, the lights. You, you actually see something that looks like a, a craft. So, you know, like I said earlier, you can try to shut me down. You can try to say that the information I'm providing is wrong or dangerous, or you can try to demonetize me for live streaming reality. But the truth is the people who have been watching the channel knows that the information that we have been bringing forth has progressively been right. I mean, even to get away from UFOs, I think the pandemic, I think we were talking about in January, in late January, weeks and weeks before any flight restriction was ever placed, that there was going to be a world pandemic and that this virus was probably going to spread throughout the entire world in about a month's time, which is exactly what happened. And in fact, I had close individuals when I told them this, who said I should go to a mental hospital. I think we also made an episode about ichthyosaurs saying that ichthyosaurs, the, these marine reptiles, that they possibly could be larger than blue whales based on what we thought was a fossil discovered in Antarctica. A year later, the paleontology story of the year is that ichthyosaurs could be as large as blue whales. This new finding from jaw fragments that they found in some museum indicated that ichthyosaurs could have been actually 30% bigger than what was previously estimated. And there was also findings that the ichthyosaurs were discovered oftentimes in Antarctica, which is exactly where we thought we found a fossil. So it's not just UFOs. There's all kinds of different episodes in which we've discussed different topics that have come to light. And it's really unfortunate that we live in a time where being right uh, counts for nothing, essentially. It doesn't matter how many times you're right. I can go from having tens of thousands of views in an episode to now, I think my previous episode, I had 300. So honestly, it's really unfortunate, but we do have an awesome following of very loyal individuals. And I want to thank all the viewers who have stuck around, who has been there all along. What else can I say? I should also thank the Patreon members. They've given more funds to this channel. I think I only have seven patrons, but I think they've actually in total, including our producer, uh, Will Anderson, I think in total, they've actually amounted to more money than YouTube has given to the channel itself. So what can I say? This is a crowdfunded project. So thank you everybody who stuck around. So I guess I'll just end it at that, you know, just with a big thank you. Anyways, this is Felipe speaking, signing out.